Welcome to the uh, June 5th, uh, 2023 edition of uh, RV and Travel Adventures. Hope you're doing fantastic uh, wherever you are at. In this edition, I'll be talking about my recent trips to uh, California and also some of my camping adventures here in uh, Texas. Uh, this video is essentially for individuals who want to learn more about uh, California and also camping in Texas. Just to get an overview, an understanding from my perspective, I'd recommend getting various uh, folks out there, their different opinions, because not one opinion is the opinion. So uh, this is my opinion about my experiences in California, because that's all I can give you is my opinion, my perspective. So I'm gonna be talking about, again, what am I gonna be talking about? My trips, uh, my recent trips, and adventures. I hope you find it valuable, uh, useful, and uh, a little bit entertaining. Hope you like it. Again, again, it's June 5th, 2023, and I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I have my little notes here. Let me uh, get to the official page. It's a small little, <laughs> little booklet here. I visited uh, various communities. I took uh, the flight from uh, Southwestern Airlines in Dallas at Love Field. And it took me to LA, then eventually I landed at San Francisco uh, Airport, SFO. It was a great little flight. I had my, no issues, no problems. Again, uh, I traveled from Love Field to SFO, no issues. It was a very pleasant uh, trip uh, via air. Again, uh, you know, there's some people say, hey, this, uh, it's crazy, it's nuts, it's crazy, it's nuts. If you get there in plenty of time, to the airport and have somewhat of a brain to process the information about where to go from you know gate A, to have a little bit of lunch, what to eat, what to pack, etc, etc. Uh, you should have no issues. Again, my wife uh, travels quite a bit every year. She travels uh, <clears throat> throughout the United States uh, at least a half a dozen times, sometimes a dozen times a year, and she's very good at organizing my uh, travel via the air adventures. I'm the expert on RVing, but she's the expert on air travel, okay? So we uh, landed in uh, SFO and then went straight uh, to uh, San Jose to have a burrito because that's how we roll. We went down there and had some food and then we went to later on to a Japanese restaurant in Japantown in San Jose and had some uh, very nice food down there. Then we traveled to my daughter's house in Mountain House California. Very unique uh, planned community. My daughter moved down there about 10 years ago, 15 years ago if I remember correctly, just when they were starting to build this uh, little planned community. My daughter absolutely loves it down there and uh, so it's uh, it was affordable at the time. You know when houses are selling for a million bucks in San Jose, houses down there were selling for 400,000. So it was quite affordable for a person who has a decent job. And her husband is uh, works at the Sheriff's Department, Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department and has been down there for quite a few years. My other daughter also married a Sheriff's Deputy who moved on to being a probation officer. So they're all doing very very well. So let me talk about Mountain House real fast. Now, again, this is my thoughts of my experiences of life in California. Of course, you all have uh, uncles and aunts and friends that have their perspective about California, and some of them can be quite erroneous. This is firsthand knowledge of my experiences. So Tracy is a small community uh, east of San Jose. You go, you know, north uh, a bit, and then you go east over the mounds, uh, where they have a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, you know, wind turbines, and then you finally get to Tracy. Tracy's on the right, and Mountain House is on the left. There, it's part of Tracy. Mountain House is essentially part of Tracy, but it's separated. It's essentially a planned community, a very well planned community at that. Its high school is rated four stars, top of the line school in this state of California. And also, uh, you know, uh, excellent, excellent uh, 
school system down there. So that's the reason my daughter said, hey, let's go down there. I heard they're building. There's going to be a fantastic little community that my we can afford and that my husband could commute an hour and a half uh, to his job in uh, Silicon Valley and come back. And it's call it good. Okay. So it's a significant commute for them. And that's their decision to pick that community because it has uh, proposed uh, very good schools. Okay. It's four stars and it's in the top 10% of schools in the state of Texas. Compare that to schools here in Fort Worth. Uh, if you wanted to go to a, a public school, you know, actually administered by the, you know, city of Fort Worth, uh, the, the school district that actually was built is not a charter school. Uh, there are no schools, from what I understand, in the city of Fort Worth that are a four star or uh, in the top 10% academically you know, in the state of Texas. So you have options to where you want to live. In fact, some of the schools in my neighborhood are one and two star, quite, quite poor. Okay. So my granddaughter was, uh, Ava was having a graduation. So that's the reason we went down there and traveled down there to see the uh, graduation and a uh, very interesting community. Very, very interesting community. The demographics are very different from here in Texas and my neighborhood. Uh, it's uh, the largest ethnic community uh, at the school that my granddaughter attended, Mount House High School, is uh, Southwestern Asian, essentially Indians, uh, people uh, from that area, that vicinity, uh, Southwest Asia. And uh, so it's, you get a very different dynamic of, as compared to where I live now in Texas. So Texas, this neighborhood is essentially African American, uh, white, and Mexican with a little sprinkling of other cultures, India, China, etc, etc. But over there it was very dramatic, very large community, and you can see walking down the street in, you know, during lunch breaks, the parents, the grandparents, the elders in their uh, traditional attire. And it was very, very interesting. In fact, uh, when graduation took place at Mount House High School on stage, one of the administrators was dressed in traditional uh, attire from that region of Asia, from India. Um, and she had, uh, you know, the, war, the sari, etc., etc., etc. So it's a different dynamic, a different dynamic. And all this, and the students you can see on their hats, I'm going to Stanford. I'm going to Stanford. I'm going to Stanford. I'm going to Stanford. I'm going to UC Berkeley. I'm going to UC Berkeley. I'm going to UCLA. I'm going to UCLA. I'm going to MIT. I'm going to Caltech. They're all going to, not all, most are going to uh, very prestigious schools. My daughter was uh, said, hey, I'm, not, I'm good, but I'm not, uh, I'll just, well, I wanted to go to San Jose State just like my grandfather. So I went to San Jose State. She said, oh, I can go to San Jose State. And the people that have gone to San Jose State have moved on to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and all the schools. So, you know, it's a good entry point. And she's very familiar with San Jose having all my sisters, brothers, her cousins, nephews, and familia down there, my nephews rather, and nieces and stuff like that are all down there. So she has a good infrastructure at San Jose State. And San Jose State is an urban uh, college. It's downtown San Jose, and San Jose State is part of it. It's not like being in, where she has lived for a long time, in Mountain House, in the middle of nowhere, to, to a certain extent. Just an enclave, an academic uh, enclave devoted for families in education. Uh, if you walk around Mountain House, people are on bicycles. People are on skateboards, people are walking, people are jogging. You don't hear loud cars, <laughs> you don't hear craziness. Uh, there are no liquor stores <laughs> in my house. You have to go somewhere else to get liquor and, and, and stuff like that. So it was a very super, super, super family friendly, super academically oriented community. So if you wanted to ever move to a uh, uh, reasonably affordable houses now go the first seven, eight, nine 
hundred thousand dollars for a lot of folks that's hey that's out of my price range but if you can't afford it it's a very nice community if you want your children to be educated the right way to be in a community where you feel safe you're basically isolated though here's mount house there's a space shopping centers and some odds and ends upscale shopping centers regular sales shopping centers and then there's tracy and the rest of the unwashed masses okay not saying you know i came from the unwashed masses i came out okay but you know that's people make those decisions so so after we were in uh tracy i'm not tracy uh you know mountain house we uh went across the golden gate bridge uh, to San Rafael to stay with some friends down there. Before we got there, we decided to go to Alta Plaza, uh, very nice, uh, you know, park with great views, absolutely stunning views of the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz and the bay. And it was a beautiful sunny day, and I really enjoyed it. My wife and I walked around the park, and then we went to uh, the area around there, and you know, you know, very nice Pacific Heights, absolutely fabulous. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar homes. Dare to dream, huh? So we went down there and people were just standing there, sitting, lying down right there with the views and just relaxing, just looking at the at the bay and going, that's the life. Again, it's a hill overlooking the bay. So if you ever want to go to San Francisco, go to Alta Plaza around there. And it's free parking. Uh, it's no problems. Just free parking at the park. Once you go a little further down, there's, you're going to charge you you know, the usual parking meter sort of stuff, but around the park, most of the park, from what I can see, that's free. So we just parked there, went for a walk around the park, and then we went, uh, very nice, very nice, absolutely fabulous uh, walk uh, to downtown, that little area uh, where the shopping centers are. Of course, they're all upscale shopping centers. We even walked into a marijuana dispensary just to get an idea and the people, they sell a lot of gummies and chewables and odds and they go, hey, this is interesting. You know, it's very different from Texas. Texas uh, criminalizes the use of marijuana while California is very open about, hey, you know, you want to partake, it's up to you. It's your life. You know, it's, it's your freedoms. It's, uh, you have those freedoms. In Texas, they just say, hey, uh, you, we say you're, you can have freedoms, but, you know, we cut you off here. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. Just uh, follow the old dudes uh, in charge over there and in Austin and just shut up. Okay. But, so while in San Rafael, I had, went to have coffee. My wife and I enjoyed a good time in Mill Valley, a rather upscale little enclave. And I had coffee down there. I had a little coffee gathering. People, I invited people to come down there and hang out with me. So it's very, very nice. Uh, previous to that, a couple days previous, I had a gathering in San Jose, in which about a, uh, almost a dozen people came and hung out with me. People I went to high school with, people I went to college with, people I participated in the various, uh, you know, political actions of the 70s and 80s with in San Jose. They were very nice to come. Facebook friends also came by, et cetera, et cetera. Even familia. Uh, came by and eventually I went to visit Familia up in the hills. Great views. One of my sisters has a ranch. Both of my sisters have ranches on Mount Hamilton and uh, we went on the patio and absolutely fabulous views of Silicon Valley from almost all the way to San Francisco, you know, to Gilroy, San Jose, right in front of you. Very, very nice. My older sisters are in their mm, 90 years old approximately they're, and they're doing okay. Not great but okay. And their hus husband's, uh, my sister Dolly's husband's doing okay. My uh, sister Carmen's husband passed away several years ago. So I went to, let me look at my little notes, uh, San Rafael. We went for hikes. I went for hikes along the Point Reyes National Seashore and I also stayed, visited and had lunch at Point Reyes Station. Absolutely charming little small town. I want to move there. I want to move to... <laughs> <laughs> Point Reyes Station, please. And it was very, very nice. And also we hiked around uh, my uh, friend's uh, house in San Rafael. You go two doors down and there's the open space and you can go on a trail. And it goes, uh, meanders over in the hills. And you have some great, fabulous views of the bay towards San Francisco also. And then it turns around into some, you know, actual roads in front of, uh, you know, roads in front of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar houses. And then it goes back to another trail. And uh, so it was a lot of fun. It was a hell of a lot of fun doing some extra, going up these hills, 
you know, going up hills is very different from going flat. In Texas, everything's flat, so I can hike for miles upon miles upon miles. No issues. But over there, <laughs> it was straight up, and I got quite tired. And But then uh, going down was a pleasant reprieve. So then, of course, then we come through a little gate after the trail, and then you go into a nice road with the uh, very nice homes. One thing I noticed, uh, my wife and I noticed while we were in uh, these affluent areas is that they can afford to have some very pleasant smells around them. So they had lavender, very nice smell of lavender. Uh, you know, various other plants that you know have beautiful, absolutely fabulous jasmine smells, etc., etc. And of course, they're all beautifully landscaped, these homes. That's what you do when you have money. You do some beautiful landscaping and you look at the small details and it looks absolutely fabulous. I looked down the backyard and I could see that they have a great view of the bay towards Sausalito, etc. etc. Very nice. So I went down there and uh, had a great time hiking, getting some exercise. So let me see. Hey, what do I have here? Oh, yeah. Then I finally, after I left these folks, uh, my friends, my wife's friend specifically, she, she's known them for many, many years. She's known them for over 30 years. I've only known them for about 15, 20 years. So she's known them for quite a while. So she knows these people from her activities and politics and feminist activities in Minnesota and stuff. And they came together over here and they've uh, done very well for themselves. <laughs> very nice house, very nice swimming pool. Uh, people come over all the time and say, hey, can we hang out over here at your house? Great views. Great swimming pool, great house, uh, and of course, plenty of beverages. So very nice, a very popular hangout for friends of uh, Karen, okay? So then uh, we decided to go to down the coast over the Golden Gate Bridge, and we went down the coast, and we went on Highway 1 again, and we stopped off at various uh, spots. A lot of the spots that I used to go to as a child and just parked, camped, even stayed overnight, are no longer that. They have more restrictions because the population has increased exponentially over the last uh, 50 years. You know, it's grown, grown. So we traveled on San Rafael, from San Rafael, Golden Gate Ridge, Highway 1, checked out some beaches. We went to Bean Hollow and stayed there for a while, did some hiking. And then we went, continued down the road, we went to downtown Santa Cruz, beautiful downtown Santa Cruz. You know, Pacific Garden Mall, one of my favorite haunts uh, growing up in the Silicon Valley area. I've been down there about 100, 200, 500 times if, you know, going down there having a coffee hanging out with my friends who live down there, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this time I went to go visit a friend in Soquel. There's the beach, there's Capitola, and up in the hills, down some security path, is Soquel. So visit a friend of mine, uh, it's, had a great time. He took us <laughs> to Carmel, uh, you know, Carmel Valley. Uh, we went to Watsonville, had some, again, what? What did we have? I had some burritos, some good burritos in Watsonville. At Super Taqueria, and uh, we had some great times going to arts events in Santa Cruz. This goes on and on and on. I had a great time. I have no complaints about my adventures in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, San Francisco, the North Bay, Santa Cruz, Capitola, Socal, Carmel, etc. Absolutely fabulous. Of course, uh, we got what's called in Spanish envidia, a lot of jealousy. We go look at this house. Well, that's nice. It, Pancho would show us a uh, sister. We went to a sister-in-law's house in Carmel. And he goes, yeah, it's worth about 10, 10 million bucks. It's a nice house, isn't it? Yeah, it is a nice house for $10 million. Very nice. Very pretty. Beautifully landscaped. Great location. Can't complain. I would love to have uh, my life in that house because I, I know the area. I know Carmel. I've lived in Carmel, uh, not lived in Carmel, I lived in Salinas, Watsonville, which are near Carmel, and I always went down there and um, can't complain about Carmel. It's a little foggy, it was a little overcast, not much fun until we went to Carmel Valley over the, over the hills, and then it uh, was a lot better weather. Okay, so weather changes dramatically. You just, by the ocean, it'll be overcast, and then you cross over a mountain, then it'll be nice and sunny. So the fog does not typically go over the mountains in uh, that part of the world, okay? So let me look at my little notes. So I saw plenty of beaches, plenty of flowers, and the demographics were very, very different from what I'm used to here in 
Fort Worth. I live in a working class, middle class neighborhood here in Fort Worth, but you just have to go a little bit down the road about a half a mile and then you get some quote unquote section eight projects types house. And you go a little bit further and there's some working class homes and then they get some nicer homes again. And uh, that's a reality. You know, if you want some nice homes, live in a nice area, uh, upscale, uh, you live by TCU in that Bel Air, Hoolan area. That's a very nice area. Very nice. Very nice. Of course, uh, there's areas in Dallas which are very, very similar. But where we live, we get a very, you know, interesting mix of folks. We have a small, you know, Latino population in this neighborhood, but we have a very large African American and a very large white population, a small you know, Asian population. And uh, when I go to the park, I see the demographics, I see the, see the people. So it's very interesting to be back where, you know, it's uh, the, the demographic makeup is significantly different than those affluent areas. Of course, if you're in an affluent area in California, in the affluent areas I went to, it was predominantly white, white, and then white, okay? So there's different demographics, and it's uh, obvious when you got wealth in California, the demographics change incredibly quickly, and the demographics are different. Of course, there's going to be uh, certain communities which cater to certain other certain ethnic groups, and there's certain enclaves, but uh, the areas which we were in were old money, old folks that were been here for been there for quite a while not recent arrivals to, to uh from uh, techies etc 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 so one of the other things i've noticed uh, in visiting uh you know silicon valley san rafael socal and all these other communities a lot of my friends are having uh, physical issues they have physical limitations a lot of them almost every last one of them is getting or has had knee surgery. One of them is going to have two knees worked on. One of them had another one knee. One had a hip, and uh, you know they're all getting surgeries for this, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, I felt bad when I was hiking, and I'm running past him, and I, and I just to, just to get in front of him so I could take a picture. They go, uh, Garza, you're doing pretty good. I said, Hey. So that's my uh, things I wanted to talk about. Let me take, oh, I forgot to say, I got my last little note here. <laughs> when I was hiking, I said, I should have shot this video. There's this, uh, you're hiking in the affluent hills above San Rafael, having a great time, looking at these beautiful 10, 20, 30 million dollar homes with great views. And then you see this, on the opposite side of the road, a little pull out, a little pull through area, which I call a pull through for an RV. I said, that'd be a perfect spot to, uh, dry camp. <laughs> I should have shot a video of that. Uh, you know, just I could see some person hanging out there with their barbecue, you know, cooking on a grill, having their little camp chairs with the views. And go, hey, I got some really good views here. This is a nice little camp spot I got here. Except, of course, you can't do that. But I said that'd be that'd be fantastic <laughs> if that person I knew that I knew down there, you know, you know, the other house had that house, and I can camp, park my RV across the street. That would be fantastic. That would be absolutely fantastic if I knew that person there and I can camp there. You need just pull, it's a super pull through, a very nice pull through. And uh, another thing is that I, uh, my rental car, while I was in uh, traveling around uh, San Rafael, uh, you know, all over the San Francisco, San Jose, the East Bay, you know, Mount House, uh, you know, Santa Cruz, et cetera, et cetera, SoCal was a Prius. I got 58 miles per gallon. I put on eco mode and I said, hey, let's see how much, how many miles per gallon I can get. 58 miles per gallon. I only spent about, uh, you know, less than 50 bucks on gas. I was going, man, it's going to be all the, the most gas station were five bucks a pop. Okay. Here in Texas is three bucks a pop. So uh, I go, hey, this is better. Than, you know, I'm getting better mileage than my truck. My truck gets 21, 22 if I'm lucky. And uh, when I'm towing, it gets nine. I go, this is pretty nice. You know, it's actually inexpensive if you got a nice Prius. I gets the super, 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 super mileage. So if you're ever planning to travel 
to California and you don't like the idea of paying expensive gas prices, just say, hey, give me a Prius and uh, call it good. And I, I drove around that Prius like I own the world, man. I, you know, I, I went once uh, two, three days driving. I said, how many? I only needed about two gallons. Pretty good, huh? And that was, you know, 10 bucks of gas. It's better than paying 100 bucks in gas. You know, 10 bucks of gas. That's pretty good. So those are my final thoughts. California, absolutely fabulous. Enjoyed it a ton. Wish I could live there. That's my final thought. I wish I could live there. My family is doing very, very well. My sister Carmen, we drove around one day and she showed me a house over here. I own that house. Drive around this nice neighborhood. Not a working class neighborhood. It's an upscale neighborhood. She goes, I own that house, that house, and that house. I go, very nice. Oh, over there in the nicer, even nicer area, I own that house. Yes, you're doing fabulous, Carmen. It doesn't do me any good knowing that you are doing absolutely fabulous because I like it. I like it that you're doing well, but it ain't doing me any good unless I get one of these houses, okay? <laughs> and the same goes with my sister, Dolores. She's doing very, very well and a lot of other people that I know. And of course, people I stayed in San Rafael, what do they do for a living? What does Liz do for a living? She's a real estate investor. She invests in apartment complexes, buys them, rents them out, etc., etc. Hope you're doing fantastic. This is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and leave your kind and friendly comments below. And uh, don't forget to ring the bell for future notifications, notificaciones, from uh, Fort Worth, Texas, where it's nice and humid and hot. Gracias. <laughs> Adiós. Bye-bye.